This is the real purge, the forever purge. Bless our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. Guys, the forever purge, is it good? Is it bad? Should you go? Should you not go? We're gonna find that out today. Yo, what's going on, Movie Nation? It's Just Jesse. I hope you're having a good day. And today, yes, the forever purge, I am located in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Today, we are going to go to AMC Nile Self in, not IMAX, not Dolby, just regular today. I wish they had it in IMAX or Dolby. I would have gotten it. Guys, if we're just meeting for the first time, hello. Hi, my name is Jess. My YouTube channel, It's Just here we do movie reviews, giving you the biggest and best reviews of the movies that are released at the time. So please, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you never miss any new information on the movies. Guys, stick around to the end of this video because we are going to review it. We're in front of the theaters. We're going to leave the forever purge. As we made it to the theater, it is actually 3 o'clock. Okay, Movie Nation, let's talk about the movie. So we got the Forever Purge. This is the real purge, the Forever Purge. Bless our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you guys. Guys, the Forever Purge, I'm coming at this movie with a different perspective. I just wanna let you guys know that I am half Mexican and this movie did, does tackle with Mexican immigrants, Texas, and everything about that. Even though I'm based in Chicago, I am gonna be a little different towards this movie just because I am Mexican. It does deal with real world implication based on this movie, what's happening right now in real life. So what do I mean by that? I watched the first Purge, Purge Anarchy, Election Year, and the prequel which is the first purge. This movie is not directed by James DeMonaco who did write the script. He also directed the first three movies. He did not direct the prequel but he did write all of them based into my knowledge. So we got two couples and uh, one side character which is the sister that we're gonna spend the most of our time with. So we got Ana de la Guerra as Adela. We also got his her husband which is Tena Huerta which is Juan. Josh Lucas as Dylan Tucker. We got Levan Rebian as Harper Tucker. And then we got the little sister as Cassidy Freeman as Emily Kate. So the movie opens up with the couple, the Mexican couple, cr trying to cross into the US border legally. So they come under these underground tunnels which gives me a little bit vibe of as above so below you know that scary movie with like paris that den demonic stuff the up and down movie yeah give me a little bit of vibes about that so they cross into the mexican border trying to make, lead the normal american dream life then the movie jumps forward to like 12 months because then they came right after the other purge ended so now we know that after election year we thought the nffa was defeated or the purge was over but obviously the girl who got elected from the last movie she probably did her two terms or whatever the nfa in the beginning after they're doing the screenwriting and talking about the directors and the cast say that the nfa AA has gotten control of the government again so they are already back implementing the purge fast forwards again March 21st 7 o'clock in the night the purge continues we see everything so this looks feels sounds like every other purge movie when they go into initially into lockdown the same sirens the same commencement so the commencement of the annual purge has now been authorized you know that blue screen so it does happen one thing cool about that is the movie when it starts setting up like the ramping up after the initial phase does Mexican and English so because we're based in Texas I want to say Valley Texas or Napa some Texas I'm sorry I didn't catch that when all the Mexicans they gather to be safe for this 12 hours and the movie doesn't start there it does but bear with me for a second so when they go into lockdown I thought it was cool it was Mexican and English simultaneously at the same time giving the orders of the purge commence so you know how in every other purge movie it's always like that blue light it says like the annual purge has now begun then sirens they have a Mexican version playing not at the same time but it cuts back and I thought that was a great addition because they're in Texas now so they're cowboys there's a lot of Mexicans in Texas so I thought that was pretty cool but the movie starts ramping up right after that it skips the whole nighttime scene of the purge. We do get a little glimpses throughout the night of what's going on, but the movie's not really centered about that. Fast forward, 7 o'clock in the morning. This is where the movie really starts. So we go into this normal day, 7 o'clock in the morning. Everyone goes back to work, but we notice that there's not a lot of people at the work site itself. So, you know, I'm thinking, hmm, where is everybody? And now we get into the little gritty details. So a lot of people are betraying the NFA and they want to do the forever purge, the real purge. So they start killing math, right? It's like purge, but during the day, which changes the whole landscape because now it's like people think that purging is stopped because to me, I was like, okay, well, if I knew that people were going to be forever purging then I would probably be like a come to try to way to come back is like be on the defensive side so people don't know that and I thought that was a negative they almost killed the main character we're like less than 30 minutes in and they're trying to kill the main character and I was just like wow I'm not gonna tell you if they did or didn't but that was really scary because the forever purge starts taking place so people go back on their bosses people start rebelling against this double NFAA however it's funny because the military the NFAA starts combating back because they don't want the forever purge but for some whatever reason the movie doesn't tackle why these group of people all over the nation want to do the forever purge like we don't get no backstory between that what's going on around the world like when you turn on the radio, they're like, the civilians have trying to come back. The NFA can't hold them back. The people are trying to do forever purging. They don't want to stop. It's like, we don't get any backstory towards that. It's just, people just want to go rock wild. Why? I felt like the movie probably a little missed that a little bit too far, or maybe it's implied in the ABO series or whatever series that they have, which I didn't watch. Unfortunately, I do. I am so sorry that I didn't watch that. But so basically without ruining the story, everything goes to hell. And these five characters, Juan, Harper, Dylan, Dell, and Kate, or Emma Kate have to work together in order to cross the Mexican border because the movie says that Canada or Mexico has opened the doors for the 
chaos that's happening all across the United States. But the movie really ramps up on these five characters after the morning scene because so basically that's the first half of the movie. The second half is the movie them trying to get through Texas through the daytime and into the nighttime go into Mexico. So that's basically the second half and obviously that's when like the purge really starts like being a purge movie because you start seeing like classical stuff like masks it looks and feels and sounds like like the purging but one thing too that i really like this is like a romance story because we have two couples one of them is pregnant which is a harper tucker we got the mexican couple and the little sister so both of them have to travel across texas but the reason why i say romance story because anarchy or election year or the first purge just focus on surviving this focus on surviving with a group of people now that's what i loved about purge anarchy and election always had a group of people racing towards a destination try, trying to get something safe so that's what i love about the purge movies and this feels like that also adding a little bit of character development towards it okay so it starts with the day purge so it still feels i still said this so it still has a lot of killing bloody and gore and action sequences throughout the whole purge movie and this movie and its sequel and what's going on but it's during the day so that's the one thing too i want to talk about it's like during the day it's not during the night and i don't know how i feel about because usually the purge is scary in the dark but usually during the day it just gives a different type of feel and the romance story and even in texas i like the way how the characters did not talk like i don't want to like disrespect but they're like how do y'all i don't even i can't even say the way they talk is so cool though i really loved it the masks are so different because they deal with cowboys now and then i just want to say usually in the other purge movies it's a different type of masks now it's more spray print it's more cowboy thing so it's a different take in the purge movie series so i want to talk about this for a second it deals with real world implications so these people these anti-nfa people that want the forever Herd are basically in texas just to kill immigrants like i remember in the beginning before the shutdown of the 12 hours they're like we need to rent queens of this america and like it just feels weird because i was watching this think about it now we're in 2021 we're in july this movie was supposed to come out june of 2020 but it got pushed back because of covid and now i'm mexican so it's like and it just feels bad for immigrants because they're trying to eradicate us like and I'm, I'm just like damn like why like they're trying to kill people and it's it's crazy because we're mexicans at the end of the day some of us you know and i'm half it's like they're trying to kill mexicans immigrants because we're trying to plague the nation so that's what they're doing they're trying to kill everyone and people who are not a part of their society or this anti-ffa forever purge thing are killed on site and you see that throughout the film because this team or this group of people the two couples and the sister while they are trying to get crossed to mexico it's like they're getting hunted by these anti people and it's like why just because they're mexicans and they're texas and they're white people like they want the texans or the mexican people gone like that's really what it boils down to because there's a scene in the middle of the movie where they're in like the almost to the border but in the city and these people of anti-nfa people are trying to like combat these and like they just officially say we'll let you go if we kill that mexican it's like and it deals with racism and humanity and hate it's like and it does because i remember one of the blogs saying that the directors or the people or the writers want to do like um, what's happening in real life and it's crazy because that's what's happening now like let's be very honest watching this movie after covid and these circumstances has really changed the game forever because especially during the day it's like like asian hate just because of covid people are hating on them or like mexicans like we've always had to deal with this like i'm sorry to like talk about this but it's true because this movie deals with this type of issues the way it handles it very different because the way it handles it is a wholly different type of video but it's very true what it's talking about it's like racism and hate and we're getting killed on site and it's not even just that it's also dealing with like white supremacy because white people are still killing white people just because of their bosses or be just because you know they're under the ladder tree like if someone's working for someone else that's what they don't like it talks about that and it doesn't just talk it talks about all these act situations in this movie so this movie really hit home a little bit different than normal because it's just tackles a different subject of genre especially what we're going through now it's like wow you know i really want people to see this movie not because of the blood and gore and the violence but like the world just the things that they portray the things they talk about and it's like the nfaa you know they talking about in the radio oh they can't stand it there's been hit on the military base it's like and i remember towards the end of the movie they're like the nfa cannot handle this what they started to it's like what do you think like people were just gonna want to purge for 12 hours no like once it's like unlocking pandora's box like god of war like once you do that boom everything is gonna go crazy and what like and that's what i talk about too cat the hate of immigrants because people didn't like asians people didn't like mexicans people didn't like russians it's like people and i'm not trying to like be sentimental right here but it's like it deals with this type of stuff so i still have to talk about it and like of course i'm mexican you don't think that i've gotten hate by getting pulled over or just like even black lives matter in chicago it's like what like that's what i'm saying this movie hits very differently and i know we're going off a little tangent but i really have to talk about it because the movie really does talk about this it's like instead of getting pulled over boom we're shot we're probably gonna be dead just because we're mexican just because of the color of my skin and the movie really tries to show you that mexicans and texans and americans can work together to overcome evil and it's scary for the future because this has changed the whole landscape because i remember at the end of the movie and i'm not gonna say loses or dies but and then the movie it comes up and it says the america has been overturned by these anti-purgers but now we're trying to fight back so find out what happens after all this is done and that now we don't know if we're gonna get the next purge movie i heard that this was gonna be the last one and this was the last one damn that would suck because i want more i want to see what happens but ending the movie that on like a high note between the people trying to fight the anti-nfa people not the military there's three types of people i'll put it on the screen so you got the normal 
normal humans, we got the anti-FFA, and we got the regular. And the NFFA, from my, what I see in the movie, they have been eradicated. Like, they need to regroup. So it's just the regular people attacking the anti people because they don't want... Damn, this just changes everything because all those characters that I got attached to from the previous one... And by the way, they're not in this movie. So maybe they're doing their own thing, but then we realize that the other movies took place in other different parts of the United States. The last part of the movie takes place, I don't want to say in the desert, but between the border, the, and there's a great fight sequence, bloody goring scenes, and everything that we come to know about Perth. And where the guy's like, does this translate? Boom. And so, I don't know, I just really thought it was good. Everything from the beginning, from Texas, from the beginning, the middle part, trying to get to the border, and then I want to say the fight at the border, which is the third act, which I think everything of the, about this movie was awesome. Other than just the negative that we just talked about today, guys. Before we rate this movie, I just want to say the romance story in this movie, I thought it was phenomenal because I always like romance, and you guys know me. On this channel, we love romance, so watching these romance characters in The Purge was really awesome. The Forever Purge, I want to say this is a different type of good movie. Like, if you haven't watched it, please do. And if you haven't watched the other ones, I recommend you doing that so you can caught up with the story. But honestly, guys, I really like this one because it deals with real world implication with hate and racism and Mexicans and immigrants and Texas and white people and NFAV towards everything that's going on. So just saying that, it just strikes a different nerve because especially watching it, I just want you guys to know, watching this movie after COVID, after 2020, it really hits different. Honestly, guys, that's going to be everything it for me today. Hope you have a great day. Let me know if you ever need anything. You know, I'm always here for you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up so you never miss a video and you keep up to date with the movies releasing at the time. I'm Jess and this is It's Just Jess. All right, guys, take care.